When I first scrolled onto the Baseball Savant page and saw that the quality of pitch score was sorted by run value, my mind immediately started racing to understand how that was being calculated. I knew what run value was through my research on RE24, but what exactly went into the pitch by pitch breakdown that now claim to show who threw the best type of each individual pitch? Well in today's video, we are going to dive into just that, talking about how run value is calculated by pitch type, how it's used, and even go through an example of it in action. But before we jump into it guys, if you enjoy the content you're seeing on this channel and you want to continue to see more of it, it'd mean a lot if you'd click that subscribe button. I'm a numbers guy, and only about 30% of the people who watch these videos are actually subscribed, so show your support by clicking the subscribe button down below. Before we can dive into the nitty gritty on pitch to pitch run value, we first need to have a solid understanding on what run expectancy is in general. Now I've done a few videos on this subject in the past links below, but we will go over the basics to give you all a quick refresher. The run expectancy chart looks something like this, showing the probable number of runs scored if any of the occurrences happen in an inning based on previous data. It accounts for all base runner combinations as well as each out scenario. What this chart tells us is the average number of runs scored in each situation as it has happened in the past. So of course it isn't a guarantee that you will score a run with no outs and a runner on second base but it's likely that you will score at least one. Using this chart, you can then apply it to see if you should bunt or if you should steal, both of which I've covered in previous videos. For example, if you have a runner on first with no outs, successfully stealing second would increase the average number of runs scored by the team in a similar situation from 0.8 to above one. But if you are not successful, then you've squashed your chances from 0.8 to 0.2. Pretty simple to understand, right? But what we are going to be talking about in today's video takes this chart a step further by breaking down not only outs in base runner situations, but pitch by pitch data, as well as batted balls and play data to quantify how successful individual pitches in a pitcher's repertoire have fared against hitters throughout each season or even his career. When diving into this subject, I honestly had some trouble finding some quality sources of information, but an article posted back in 2016 by Ian Malinowski titled An Introduction to Per Pitch Run Values really laid out this concept in an easy to understand way. Of course, that article and any others that I found useful in creating today's video will be located in the description below. So to analyze pitches rather than base runners, we have to break up our results into two separate categories, the first being the count, aka balls and strikes, and the second being balls in play. First we'll focus on the count. Here is a chart from Ian's article. What it shows us is the count in the far left column and then the effect that that pitch had on the game's run value if he threw a strike or if he threw a ball. It's important to note that for the purposes of this video, we are going to be looking at this statistic through the eyes of a pitcher. So throwing a strike, which has a negative effect on run value, is good, and throwing a ball, which has a positive effect, aka more runs, would be considered bad. So let's take a look at a quick example to show how this would function in a game. Let's start out with an at-bat in an 0-0 count. If the pitcher throws a strike, that would have a negative or good effect on the potential number of runs scored. But if he follows up the next pitch with a ball, it would increase the potential run scored, which is bad. If he then follows up with another strike in the 1-1 count and strikes the batter out on the 1-2 count, you would see that there is a minor negative change in the run value throughout the course of the entire at bat, aka you see more green than red here. To come up with the total effect this at bat had for a pitcher's total run value, all you have to do is sum the total of each change. So in this case, a negative .238 run value was associated with this strikeout. So looking at the leaderboards on Baseball Savant, you can start to see how good pitchers have to be repeatedly in order to reach the marks in the negative 15 plus range. But when you're analyzing a pitcher, you can't just utilize when he throws balls and strikes. Sometimes the ball is put in play. So, let's take a look at this chart, which has a few more perspectives. In our first chart here, you can see the run value per plate appearance on the right when a single, double, triple, or a home run occur. However, this idea values hitting a single in an 0-2 count, the same as hitting a single in a 3-0 count. To combat this, we can add in counts to our chart to then analyze separately what the run value for each pitch was when you let up a hit in any count. Looking at this chart, the added run value of hitting a single in a 3-0 count is much lower than that of when you hit a single in an 0-2 count, since the odds of the batter reaching base in a 3-0 count are already much higher. And some of you may even have an issue with the usage of play outcomes used to evaluate a pitcher on this chart. Well of course, our guy Ian has you covered too. 
Here is a chart that exchanges play outcomes for the type of batted ball put in play. It's interesting to me to see how the value of a ground ball in the MLB is negative, aka good for the pitcher, in all counts except for 0-2. To recap all of the things that we just covered in this portion of the video quickly, run value is a cumulative score of every single pitch a pitcher has ever thrown. Each pitch has a run expectancy change associated with it, and the more negative effects correlate strongly with less runs allowed in-game. When you head over to Baseball Savant, you'll notice that run values are how they are comparing what pitcher is currently performing the best in the league, and they even have sections broken down by pitch type too. The main point of this video was to shed light on a subject that I find incredibly useful for all levels of baseball. At the very least, when scrolling through Baseball Savant, at least you now understand where this all-important metric is coming from. As far as how you could apply this yourself, if you have a trackman or even if you just keep detailed book during your games, you can implement this system to quantify which pitches are performing best compared to the rest of your team or league throughout an entire season. If implemented correctly, this pitch can help quantify who truly has the best stuff on your team or in your league when it comes to the results of their previous performances. It also may help inform you to make changes on how much you throw certain pitches in the future. Regardless, this is yet another example of how data is helping push the game forward. And if you liked today's video, I've done a few other videos breaking down some of the best pitches from 2021 in the last couple weeks. Links below. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for tuning in to today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. If you want to keep learning more, here's a video and a playlist that I think you'd enjoy checking out. I'll catch you in the next one.